All right, guys, so today we're talking about something uh, super useful, and I believe this video is going to be useful for both beginners, um, intermediate players, and veterans, uh, because even if you don't have what it takes to replicate what I'm showing now, you eventually get there and you will know what gears or characters you need in order to be in a position where you can auto the entire crit without any issues on elder difficulty and auto survival mode, even though for survival mode, I wouldn't recommend you to fully auto it because uh, the crypt is more lenient with you dying, while survival mode isn't. If you lose your team, all characters, that's it, you are done. Uh, so I would advise you to be careful with survival mode with the auto combat. However, the crypt, slowly but steadily, guys, is turning into the most important thing in the game. So definitely being able to build an extremely good team that more or less never dies and clears everything for you on auto is super important because it saves you time, you can do whatever you're doing uh, and just click on the map here or there and then the battles will be done automatically. Uh, now, I will start first uh, with the support cards because they're super important then I'll be covering the characters, what character classes you need, what character types you need uh, and then I'll be covering the gears and so on and so forth. So, there are two survival, uh, there are two actual support cards that are super important, survival of the fittest, you see what it's doing, basically it's giving you health back after each fight and the tenacious fighter. If you don't have them at good enough fusion, I would strongly recommend to go ahead and max them out. How to do that if you don't know and if you have a lot of coins, you can open a lot of silver packs and there is chance to get a support card from those. Look at this, there is a 20% chance to get a support card and one of those support cards can be Tenacious Fighter or Survival of the Fittest, which is going to help you a lot. And trust me, those are super, super important. So make sure if you have the coins now, make sure to get them at Decent fusion, let's call it that way. Especially survival of the fittest currently is bugged, it worked both in the crypt and survival mode. So, uh, it, as long as you invest some coins, you can benefit from that at the moment. Now, let's start with the characters. Now, I'll be starting with the most obvious thing that you need to consider when you're choosing your team. By the way, in the end of the video, I'll quickly show you my absolute best team for grinding the crypt, it is exceptionally easy to grind crypt with that team. So you require characters with good synergy, of course that's self-explanatory, you don't need to just put three strangers, the character should have some kind of synergy between them. Also what you need in order to build a great team is characters that have a lot of unblockable special attacks, because in a lot of cases the AI is unable to, uh, to break the enemy block and then he will proceed to waste his special attack and the uh, enemy's ch character is going to block and that's going to be super bad for you. Also, you require characters that heal or have some kind of a healing mechanic. We're going to get to that later. You require characters with tagging attack. I'm just, just describing the perfect thing. But of course, later I'll show you my team. And of course, it doesn't have everything, but it has most of those things. So we cover characters with synergy, unblockable special attacks, characters that have some kind of a healing mechanics, character with tagging attack. Also, we acquire characters that can save your other characters in some way. For instance, it can be Strike Force, Scorpion, it can be Warlock Quan Chi, it can be MK11, Sub Zero, you name it. Characters that save uh, your other guys from dying, that's super important. Another thing that you need to consider is that if you want to build a team that clears script or survival mode, of course, you shouldn't have character that is Fusion 0, Fusion 1. All characters should be maxed out, or let's say all characters should be at uh, high enough fusion, or let's say similar fusion, fusion 7, fusion 8, fusion 9, and of course, alternatively, or ultimately, actually, fusion 10. Uh, and the next thing that probably it's not going to happen all the time, but it's important if you can do it, that's going to be great. Uh, you need to have characters that are dual class. Why is that? Because having characters that are dual class, or even better, characters that are nomads, or characters that have more than two, uh, uh, two classes, but are not nomads, such as classic Raiden, you should use them as well, reason being they'll be giving you more or less bonuses every single time a faction wars in the crypt, so you can use them more or less every single season, and that's super, super good. Now, without any further ado, I want to showcase my team. This is the team that I'm currently using for the crypt, and this team is destroying <laughs> the crypt. I have zero issues with the team. I did like 15 or 20 runs with that team, I never lost a character and I'm not using anything to boost them. So I'm not using, for instance, large force or revive stones. I don't use large life stones. I don't use small force stones. I don't use anything because I don't have to. This team is so strong. Now, first thing that I mentioned, you need to have synergy. Those three guys, of course, are OMK11. They do have synergy. They all have unblockable special tools. Uh, I'm sorry, both of those guys have unblockable special tools. And of course, uh, the guy Rain has unblockable special one. So another field is checked. 
they have synergies, they have unblockable special attacks, and I think they have heal. Shang Tsung heals when you kill somebody, and Rain heals if you attack the outlook, that is if you read the terrain passive, basically it says that OMK11 and Raiden teammates have 400% recovery, which is super cool. So this team has a lot of heals. Also, this team has saving mechanics. This is Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero can save both of those guys. And, unfortunately, this team doesn't have any tagging attack. But again, once again, I'm, you cannot have everything. I would be pretty glad if any of those guys had a tagging attack. Unfortunately, they don't have. Another thing that it is not met from the list that I mentioned in the beginning, none of those guys is a dual-class character, which is super unfortunate. But good for me, luckily for me, I don't need that because I'm doing crit... Uh, just for the sake of opening those chests. I'm looking for Dragon Crystals, and I'm looking for drops from battles. So I don't really care about the tombs. I have everything maxed out from this season. So uh, for my case, I'm just looking for uh, fights, and I'm just looking for the chest, hoping to get some Dragon Crystals. So in a way, I have more or less more than half of what I said in the beginning checked. I have team with synergy, I have team with unblockable special attacks, I have team that heals, I have team with saving mechanics, I don't have any low fusion characters, uh, it don't, don't give me bonuses and they don't really uh, have two classes, more or less that's the only thing that I'm not achieving with this team, but once again, for my personal case, I don't even need that. Now, let's proceed with the gears, what are the best gears to use? Now, usually guys, you know me. Uh, I don't like defensive gears. Gears that, for instance, have chance to evade special attacks, something like this. Why is that? Because when I play, I want to control the match. In a way, I don't want to rely on evading special attack. I just want to assert dominance, I want to be in the control, and I want to make sure that by the end of the game, I eat zero special attacks. So I kill everybody, and they don't really do anything to me. This is the ideal situation for me. However, if you're playing survival mode, everything changes, and I mean everything changes. And there are certain things that you need to consider. There are certain things that, in my opinion, are super important. Now, you're looking at four maxed out epics, you're going to say not everyone has those, and I understand. But I'm going to give you what's the most important thing out of those, so that you can build something similar. Uh, the thing, first thing that you need is, on your starter, you need to have 100% resistance to stun. Luckily for me, the Frost Orb gives me that, immunity to stun. But you can get close to this by having, let's say, 80 or 90% resistance to stuns. And there's a lot of ways that you can achieve that. The next thing that you need, that's the next epic piece that every single one of you should have equipped. It doesn't matter the fusion. Of course, the higher the fusion, the better. But even at fusion zero, this piece gives you 70% chance to steal the positive effect. And you all know how annoying it is when the enemy character stacks in, they're immortal, they have a vulnerability, or they have shield, or they start regenerating. That is super bad. So having ceremonial pipe is extremely important. Once again, even fusion zero counts. If you don't have this piece, make sure the moment it's available in the crypt to get it, because it is very, very impactful. Now, the Viron Jacket isn't really that great, but it is one of those pieces that gives you a chance to dodge a special attack. And that's super important, because once again, if you are fighting yourself, if you're controlling the fight, you shouldn't be taking a lot of special attacks, but the AI is dumb, they just stay and block. And in the process, the enemy is getting a lot of power, and sooner or later, they're going to do special attack on you. So having such type of piece uh, basically helps you all the time. The Thunderlord Stone Weaver is not really that important, I just use it to gain this spell, so if my Shansung, for instance, gets... Um for instance, uh, snared, he can dispel it uh, with uh, Thunder uh, Lord Storm Weaver, but generally speaking, you can use anything else. Now, there is one more thing that you should consider. If you're using team on auto combat, there is one thing that many people disregard and many people don't use when they're playing actively because it's not really great. But if you're using auto combat, this is exceptionally useful. I'm talking about the Shadow Sash. Why is that? Because the AI all the time blocks and you don't want their block to be broken so using the shadow sash can be always useful currently i'm not using it on shank because he has a lot of ways to get saved anyways uh, but generally speaking the shadow sash is super super useful piece to have on your character if you're using auto combat and by the way uh, such type of equipment i'm using on sub-zero i'm using the frost mask because it gives 50 percent opponent unblockable attack chance reduction this is super important guys because once again the ai will constantly block and having any type of equipment that increases the unblockable chance 
uh, reduction of the enemy makes sure that your block will never get broken. And that's super, super important. Also, pieces such as the cold-hearted ninja dark cryomancy is exceptionally useful because, once again, they'll be doing a lot of special attacks on you. So 62% chance to basically um, escape the special attacks is awesome. And remember, this piece works at Fusion Zero. So it is super, super good. So this brings to the next topic. You definitely require stun resistance, you definitely require ceremonial pipe. There is another thing that you require, and this is a way to get safe. Jinsei hat, unfortunately, it has to be maxed out, but there are pieces in the game that work even at Fusion Zero and that can save you. Uh, one of those pieces, as I already mentioned, by the way, as I already showed you, uh, is the Frost Orb. Uh, the saving mechanic works at Fusion Zero, so this is one of the very best pieces to have. Also, the Living Dead, you name it. Any type of gear that can save you will be welcome and will make sure that your auto runs will not end abruptly. Uh, now, there's another thing that I wanted to share with you, another piece of equipment that you should use definitely, and I mean, it is this piece is more or less 100% uh, required, uh, and this is the Varmint's Lucky Hat. The Varmint's Lucky Hat, or the armor that comes from the crypt, I forgot its name, let me just showcase it to you. Uh, I have to remove the filter. Let's see here talking about uh, the Enigmatic Lantern. It is important uh, because of the last thing. All opponent team characters need to collect 30% more, more power to fill up each power bar. What does it mean? It means uh, that the enemy will never be able to start with an X-ray. They start with the X-ray, their power bars get adjusted and they don't have three bars of power anymore. So they cannot do X-ray to you. That is super, super important. Another piece that every single one of you should try to use is the Rocking Bowling Stones. If you don't have it, then unfortunately you have to give the entire team block breaking equipment. However, if you do have it, a decent fusion, let's say fusion five, fusion six, then more or less you should, uh, Avoid getting all of the characters block breaking equipment. They should give them something so that they can do more damage. For instance, I gave Sub-Zero uh, the Cory Blade and I gave Shang Tsung uh, the Thunder Lord Storm Weaver. Another thing that you can use, of course, is resistance to the buffs. You can use defensive um, attributes that work no matter what. For instance, such as the Weakened Dad. The Weakened Dad is a piece that gives you shield on tag in. I already mentioned the Varmint's Lucky Hat gives you shield on tag out. You can also use the rare... Um, the rare armor of Lucane that actually gives you regeneration on tagging. There are so many options, but you now you basically know what I mean. You require to have certain defensive gear that work no matter what, that are not chance-based. You tag in, you get shield. You tag out, you get shield. You tag in, you get regeneration. No chance-based stuff. So if you have to summarize the gear, guys, you need defensive gear. Because, once again, the AI will block most of the time. And in the process, they're going to be taking a lot of damage. They'll be taking a lot of special attacks. So, once you have defensive gear compare, combined with the fact that you have characters that have unblockable special attacks and characters that uh, complete each other by healing each other and saving each other, uh, more or less, you won't be able to die. This is, this is how busted it is. You can beat everybody, every team, and at the end of the fight, you end up with full HP. It is extremely, extremely important. And the last thing I want to mention when it comes to the talents, you know that I hate the Revenant talent. I believe the Revenant talent is complete garbage. But if you don't have good gears like me, like maxed out epics, which probably is going to be the case for you, then it is good to use Revenant and Bone Shield for the auto uh, mode. More or less, it's the same logic. The AI is stupid. They are on defensive all the time. They're blocking all the time. Uh, and they're eating a lot of special attacks. So having Revenant and Bone Shield is going to be beneficial for you. The AI won't be able to take advantage of talents such as Outward Scorch, so make sure that also you give them defensive gear. This is going to uh, help you most of the time. All right, guys, so I hope you found this video useful. Once again, this is, in my opinion, the very best strategy to make sure that you have an immortal uh, team that beats every fight without any issues whatsoever. Again, I'm using maxed out epics, but you can come really close by using... Well, more or less the same gear, but not max fusion. It doesn't really matter. Just remember, focus on the defensive gear. Focus on gear that reduces the blockable chance of the enemies. Uh, and more or less, that's it. Once you do that, and once you have the correct team, like my team at the moment, it's impossible to die. They have two healers and a guy that can save them. Uh, so you can just forget about fighting in the crypt and you can just grind it without any issues whatsoever, knowing that you're going to win and knowing that the team will never die. And that's the most important thing. While they're fighting, you can do whatever. And at the end of the day, you can do a lot of runs like this. It is super easy. 
See you next time, guys. Take care. Perfect.